Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today, the Church celebrates the memorial of the most holy name of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's an optional memorial which was restored rather recently with Blessed John Paul II in the year 2002, together with the feast or the memorial of the holy name of Jesus. In accordance with the Jewish custom, Our Lady was given the name after eight days after her birth, which we celebrated some days ago. And her parents, Saints Joachim and Anne, were inspired to call her Mary. The Feast of the Holy Name of Mary, therefore, follows Our Lady's birthday, just as the Feast of the Holy Name of Jesus follows Christmas, you know, our Lord's birthday. This feast or memorial that we celebrate today originated in Spain. It was approved by the church in the year 1513. And it was Pope Innocent XI who extended the observance of this feast to the whole church in the year 1683, you know, particularly in thanksgiving you know, to Our Lady for a military victory on September 12th, 1683. You know, by the, the great uh, King of Poland, John Sobieski, it was a victory over the Turks who were besieging Vienna at that time and threatening the West, you know, all of Christendom and, and Europe. Ever since the time of St. Jerome, you know, in the fifth century, there have been different interpretations that were uh, favored or preferred, especially in the West, regarding you know, Mary's name, how to interpret it, what does it mean? And these are the preferred interpretations. Lady, you know, bitter sea, the light giver, and especially star of the sea. Star of the sea or Stella, Stella Maris in Latin was really a favored, a loved interpretation of the name of Mary. In more recent times, there has been um, a renewal in studies of Hebrew, and this led to a better look at the name of Mary, you know, other possible trans translations and authenticating that it was a, a genuine Hebrew name, you know, Miriam, Miriam in Hebrew. It's a beautiful, beautiful name. And there was no reason to reject it, you know, for not being an authentic Hebrew or Semitic, you know, word. So Miriam also can mean, you know, lady. You know, in Latin it would be domina, and the male counterpart would be Dominus, Lord. And for, for God, you know, Dominus. And this Our Lady certainly is, you know, sovereign you know, lady in virtue of her son's sovereign authority as the Lord of the universe. So we call upon Mary as Lady, you know, Our Lady, just as we call on, on our Lord Jesus, the Lord. And when we pronounce Mary's name, we affirm her power. We implore her intercession, her aid, and place ourselves under her protection. So she's not only our lady, our sovereign lady, but our blessed mother. And going back to that favorite interpretation before of star of the sea, you know, this our lady certainly is, for she, she guides each and every one of us especially if we, we look to her and we follow her and continually invoke her trustfully and confidently. We who are pilgrims and wayfarers, sailing as it were amid troubled seas, you know, a storm-tossed sea, which this world is you know, full of dangers, troubles, you know, for our peril. But, um, St. Thomas Aquinas assures us that you know, Mary, the name of Mary, you know, befits her, which is also interpreted as star of the sea, 
For as by the star seafarers are directed to port, so are Christians guided to glory by Mary. Our Lady guides us to the port of eternal life in heaven. Our trust in Mary, our confident and repeated invocation of her holy name will ensure that we're always filled with great peace and security despite so many troubles you know, that we experience in our daily lives, and leading us to our heavenly homeland safely and securely. You know, St. Bernard of Clairvaux, in one of his, his beautiful passages on Our Lady, he says, you know, in the time of danger, of difficulty, of uncertainty, think upon Mary, call upon Mary. Do not let her name depart out of your mouth or out of your heart, he says. So may Our Lady's name, Mary, never you know, be separated from our mouths, as it were, and from our heart, but always be present on our lips and in our heart. Invoking Our Lady's name you know, throughout our lives, you know, daily, if we could, just simply calling upon her holy name or just praying the Hail Mary, praying the Holy Rosary, you know, daily. These are practical ways to ensure that you know, we stay close to her and that we grow in our trust in her, our confidence in her, that she intercedes for us in our daily lives. And if we do this day in and day out, throughout our entire lives, we'll be ready for you know, that last moment of our earthly life a moment of death, you know, when time gives way to eternity you know, for us, we'll be ready, you know, and Our Lady will certainly, you know, prepare us for that important moment, that all-important moment, you know, for us. And what a great grace it would be for us to, at that moment, you know, repeat trustingly, confidently, as we did throughout life, her holy name of Mary, certainly together with the name of Jesus. So invoking with peace and serenity, trust, Jesus, Mary, repeating that, and you know, dying you know, in, uh, in great peace, you know, in her motherly arms, to be brought to our Lord by her, herself. And let us conclude our reflections today by an example from the life of St. Camillus de Lillis. You know, this can be found in St. Alphonsus' work on Our Lady, the glories of Mary. And it's an edifying example for us to follow. St. Camillus de Lillis, he urged the members of his religious community, the hospitallers, you know, to remind the dying whom they, they served, especially the, the sick and the dying, to often utter the holy name of Jesus and Mary. This was his custom when assisting people in their last hour. And then when it came time for him to, to die himself, he gave an edifying example of confidence in the holy names. So when death was approaching, St. Camillus spontaneously invoked the holy names, the sweet names of Jesus and Mary with tender devotion, so much so that all those who were present were inflamed with great love, a similar love for the sacred names. With his eyes fixed on the images of Jesus and Mary and his arms crossed on his breast, an expression of heavenly peace rested on his face when his soul took its flight. His last words were the sacred names of Jesus and Mary. It may be so for us as well. Praise be Jesus and Mary.